In today's show, the Blazers hold their third draft workout of the offseason. Let's get to know some second round targets. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trail Blazers, your daily Portland Trail Blazers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What? Up world, it's your past first point guard and trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen. Coming at you each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. So make it a part of your daily routine. Make it your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same. It's Locked On Blazers, your team every day. In today's show, the Blazers held a th- third pre-draft workout of the offseason. We're into it in draft mode with six new draft hopefuls in the building, mostly second round guys, because that's who you can get into the building with ease. Um, and as I think hopefully we'll end up with some higher level lottery targets that we can that we can get excited about but for now we're getting excited about second rounders today uh, I want to talk about at least four of these guys that I think are going to be kind of in the Blazers range they have the picks 34 and 40 in the second round two relatively high second rounders um th- they could they could turn anybody you know a second rounder could get a could get a real NBA contract. I think the most likely path is that they end up with two a two way deal or, or some such. Or obviously they can make a million trades and clear up the roster and then then the calculation changes pretty quickly. But let's talk about the guys who are in the building today. And then to close the show, uh, I want to I want to talk about something Sam Presti said, and it reminded me of something smart I read on the internet. Believe it or not. Different types of nerds, both nerds that run basketball teams and nerds that post on Reddit, uh, had had a, I think, similar sort of thoughts that I that I think really really to me strike at the core of what's going to happen this summer and what needs to happen this summer for the Blazers. Let's talk about these draft workouts. So, six guys in the building: Melvin Ajinsa, Cam Christie, Thierry Darlan, Malik Hall, Harrison Ingram, and Keisha Johnson. Melvin Ajinsa is playing uh, professionally in France. Cam Christie is a freshman from Minnesota. Thierry Darlan played in the G League Ignite. Malik Hall from Michigan State. Harrison Ingram from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and Keisha Johnson from Arizona. Uh, let's start with Cam Christie. I think he's he's generally speaking the highest of like rated sort of uh, like whatever aggregate highest rated prospect that was in the gym all of these guys are roughly are are like second round types second round to undrafted I don't think Lee Hall is likely to be drafted and it doesn't sound like from what I what my quick scan of the internet that that Thierry Darlan is likely to be drafted although he could be he's he's 20 and played in the G League but I I think he he does not he's you know, 71 on the ringers top 100 and not rated anywhere else. So I'm not sure he's there. And, and Malik Hall, we're just not going to talk about because he doesn't seem like he's he's an unrated uh, prospect in terms of just the services that I quickly scan to do my quick rankings. Uh, but Cam Christie, 34 on e, on ESPN's big board, uh, 44 on Kevin O'Connor's big board on the on the ringer, and Sam Vecini has Cam Christie at 34 in his most recent mock. Um, again, Raphael Barlow, friend of the podcast, only did a top 30 for his most recent big board. Uh, so Cam Christie did not make that one Christie is is one of those guys that I think if he puts it together he's the little brother of of um, Lakers wing Max Christie and they look alike you would know they were related I knew they were related because I saw a picture of Cam Christie and I said oh Christie that's Max's little brother no idea but it became clear they're built pretty similar you know uh it's, Cam Christie measured at six four and a half at the combine so you know he's he's in the six six reins in, in shoes do can shoot absolute shooter uh shot 39 percent on five and a half attempts per game at at minnesota he averaged uh, overall 11 11 points three and a half boards two two and some 2.2 assists um i think the knock on him is that he, he the thing that he does really well might be the only thing and that's kind of how it works with second round picks typically second rounders are like you have a get in the door skill What's your, you know, it's like, okay, here's the thing. This guy definitely does well. Sometimes it's just like, he's the right size. <laughs> he's, you know, it's like this dude's 6'10". It, like he's the right size. And if he can put together some skills on that frame, you know, he, he's, he can run and jump and he's tall. And if they put some skills together on that frame, maybe it works out. But like 
typically guys who, you know, higher end prospects maybe have more skills, but second round guys, guys are going to be in like the end of the first round, beginning of the second round. Again, the Blazers have 34 and 40 in this draft. There's going to be 58 picks in this draft this year because the NBA keeps taking second round picks for no reason from teams. Um, but like with with these second round guys, it's it's usually like a, you have a get in the door skill. So for Christie, his get in the door skill is shooting and then there's some question marks everywhere else. Like from what I understand, and I did not see him, I'm, I've never seen a single minute of him play. I did some research for for this podcast. So I take this with like, this is the good folks at the ringer and at no ceilings and, uh, and at hoop intellects, like helping me figure, helping me figure this out. Um, uh, so like, this is, this is me aggregating folks, uh, to be clear. But, you know, from what I gather from reading about him, it's like, He's got some defensive chops, right? Like he, they, the the scouting, the scouts think he can be, or the the draft prognosticators think he can be a pretty darn good defensive player, and he showed some showed some ability to do that. And with the length and the speed that he has, like he could maybe like it's like a two three type of guarding wings, um, three and D guy. But he's just he's just a little a little slight. Uh, under 200 pounds, um, he's probably just mostly a shooter. Didn't get to the rim. Uh, really low, uh, really low number of, of of shots at the rim as as a freshman. Um, and if you can't get to the rim, you teams just like the way they close out on you is different, right? If they're not afraid to, that you're going to drive by them, the closeouts can be hard and aggressive. And like you might not get scouted that hard in as as a as a as second rounder, but like as a second round rookie. But eventually, that's a skill that matters, like the ability to get to the rim and not just take pull ups and not just you know get into jump shots. You need to have more to your game. I think Christie's one of those guys that like if he puts it together, I think Max Christie is a pretty darn good defender, like in terms of technique and, and interest um he's not like a high level nba defender yet but i i can like i see the vision when i watch max christie play a little bit i do not like when the, i do not like when the lakers play about point guard that is unfair to what max christie is good at but if cam christie's like similar in, in terms of like defensive talent and he can really shoot it i i wouldn't be surprised if he's an nba guy like i i'm i i wouldn't be surprised at all he's you know he's coming in the league he's 18 now like he's gonna super young um he was uh, a player that a lot of people thought was going to go back to college and when someone like him uh, does not go back to college it means two things one of two things one their agent his agent or um maybe himself got some really good feedback from a team that said if you're on the board at 27 we're gonna take you or whatever it is like if you're there at 26 you're ours um and he said okay great I'm, I'm going to stay or, or they said, please stay in the draft. We're really interested in you. Right. If they didn't, if they didn't give him like the straight up promise, but um, he, you know, he either got some really good feedback from a couple teams. You're going to be in the, in the draft or he just made a bad choice. <laughs> that's, that's the other one. That's the other one. Or he made a bad choice and he's going to go like 45th and he should have stayed in school. Um, it's uh, it, it's, it's one of, it's typically one of two things, but I, I think if Cam Christie, like if it, if it comes like if, if the, the fully realized version of Cam Christie, a, a versatile defender who can really shoot off the dribble and off catch and shoots, good catch and shoot shooter, good dribble off off movement. Like I watched some highlights of him taking uh, pu- like tough pull up threes, uh, as well as as well as some catch and shoot shots. If he has versatile, you know, uh, he can shoot in a variety of ways and defend. That's an NBA player. It's just like um, what level of player can he get to and how patient can a team be? Well, guess what? The Blazers they can afford to be incredibly patient. Um, the next guy I want to talk about before we get to the to the second segment is. If, is Melvin Agenza. Um, I, this is me learning about him. Here's what I know about him. He is a 19 year old shooter. Duke can absolutely shoot. And um, he is projected to be right in sort of that, that second round range, 49th overall on, on ESPN, 41st on the ringer, 38th on San Vicini's mock. Like he's going to be right in the Blazers range. Um, you know, a six, seven, 19 year old, I guess he's, he's like mostly a shooter and plays some like hustle, uh, hustle shooter type. Uh, but he doesn't have much, um, ball handling chops to kind of like be a real wing. And maybe he just doesn't have enough, uh, enough wiggle there. Whereas Christie might have like the ball handling chops, he just doesn't have the frame and the strength, like the power to get himself to the rim. Agenza seems like he just doesn't have the, like the sort of the, it's skill more than physical tools right now. Um, and maybe he lacks a little bit of quickness. I read John Wasserman of Bleach Report says that, that, that there is, the hope with NBA teams is that his ability to shoot and he's a really good shooter would kind of outweigh his, um, some of the quickness concerns. He's playing professionally in France, like playing in a high level league. Um, and, and, and he's, I think he seems to me, if I just had to like, if I was just like doing a quick scan of these names, he seems to be the most trailblazers person who came and worked out, right? He is a, a, 
you know, he's going to be 19 on draft night. He's going to be, he's super young. He has one bankable skill shooting. He has got some other interesting parts to his game and he's the right size at six, seven. Um, like that seems like the sort of high upside swings the Blazers have really prioritized. I just don't know enough about him to call it right. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I think other folks who are dug deeper into it, uh, they'll give you better insight, but that's, that's, I'm not going to fake the funk on this one. Let me tell you about guys I actually watched. Uh, there's a couple college guys, Keyshawn Johnson and, and Harrison Ingram, my man H, um, who I want to talk about in the second segment because I actually watched them play. I like, I have, I can give you my personal insights because I've seen them play basketball a couple times or in Harrison Ingram's case, about 35 times. Uh, join me in that second segment. Let's talk, let's talk more about who was in the building for the Blazers on Thursday. Join me in that second segment, won't you? First, though, I want to tell you that today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. It's America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's the easiest, most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and your favorite players. You pick more or less on two or more player stats, and then you can win. Like, like win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars during the nba playoffs during the nhl playoffs during the WNBA season you can get in on mls action if you're into it as well whatever you're looking for you're going to find it on prize picks they even got esports if you're really if you're really getting funky so download the app today and use the promo code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. they're going to match you dollar for dollar up to 100 bucks on your first deposit Deposit match when you download that app and use the promo code locked on. It's price picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. Let's let let's let's talk some some prospects I've actually seen. Um, Keisha Johnson is uh, he's, he spent five years in college, spent went to San Diego State, and then transferred for his final year at uh, at Arizona. He comes into he, he's he is twenty two and will be um, will turn twenty three as an NBA rookie. So he's he's on the older end. But I've actually seen him play enough that I I, I kind of have a feel for his game. Um, I think I watched three full games of his. Full is maybe relative because I, I the last game against Clemson I think I um, I think I missed a little bit of it to be totally honest with you but I watched all of his early season against against Duke and all the and a tournament game against Dayton um, and and then his final collegiate game against Clemson in the NCAA tournament I, I, three is probably not enough to like scout someone <laughs> it's not enough to like have a strong scout it's enough to have form some some opinions those opinions will likely be wrong because you just haven't seen enough enough game film um but i'm not going to go back and pour over the Keisha johnson game film i'm just going to tell you what i know average 11 points 5.9 boards and 1.8 assists at arizona last year shot 53 percent from the floor including 38.7 percent from three and 71 percent from the free throw line here's the thing he didn't shoot well prior to showing up in tucson he he landed, uh, and he landed with Arizona, and he he kind of became a better shooter for the first time in his collegiate career. Um, Two point six attempts per game isn't a ton, but it's that's not that's not a small number in college college basketball. Like that's you take almost three a game in in a forty minute game. Uh, in the role that he played, that's like someone who who regularly shoots threes every night and shooting thirty nine percent, thirty eight point seven percent on two and a half attempts per game is tells you that he is capable of shooting well whether he can continue to do that stretch out to the to the nba line and do it on like volume in the league is a whole nother question i like him at I, I, 34 is probably too rich for me 40 i would Keisha johnson would be fine for me what i like about him is he's, he's kind of an he's, he's more like three four and and probably more power forwardy just because of his skill set he's not like like he's not um He's not ripping and he's not he's not t beating guys off the dribble, but he is doing a little bit of rip and run stuff. Like he is doing a little bit of like give me the ball off off a defensive rebound. I'm gonna go coast to coast, so I'm do that a couple times. He's not like in the half court though, like crossing fools up and like putting on like multiple dribble moves. He is 
what I like most about him is he shoots threes from the corners. He under like he, he that's where his a lot of his threes when I watched him at least would come from is that he would space to the corners and and get threes there, which is like kind of a natural position he would be if he's a role player in the NBA. And he crashes the offensive glass. Like I, I like that he crashes the glass, particularly from those corner spots. Um, he's physical inside at the college level at least. Like. Um, I don't know that I look at Keisha Johnson and say like that dude is going to be the one that pops and becomes a star in the league. But I do look at him and say like, I like the way he plays and I wouldn't be surprised if he's a role player in the NBA. And like, I think at 40, that's kind of what you're going for. Can we find a dude who can be a, who can play in the NBA for multiple seasons and potentially sign a second contract? That's like the goal in the second round. Okay, the last guy I want to talk about here in the in our scouting section before I want to talk about a little about Sam Presti and something I read on Reddit. Uh, I love Harrison Ingram. Look, I'm a Carolina guy. I grew up in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, I think there was a stretch in my life for 25 consecutive years where I attended at least one game and often 10 games in person. Um, this is deeply in my blood. It's been a it's been a while since someone who spent as little time in Chapel Hill has has I have grown an affection for a player like like H man Harrison Ingram is just awesome. Um, Brady Manick is probably up there, but I don't feel the same way about him because Harrison Ingram also has like an infectious personality. He's like a fun dude, um, and I think he was really important kind of um, sort of soft stuff in terms of bringing the team together with. Um, you know, camaraderie, leadership, good vibes, all of those things. Uh, he is smaller. He av- he measured six five and a quarter at the combine, and I think he's a power forward in the NBA. That's not a very big one, but he has a really long standing reach. Got long arms, despite despite being under six. You know, basically six five. He's, he's got long arms. He averaged 11, 12 points, eight point eight boards, two point two assists. And 1.4 steals, shot 46.7% from from the field, including 38.5% from three on 4.6 attempts per game. And he shot 61% for the free throw line because he was a he shot bricks at the free throw line. Drove me crazy. Um, I think the shooting is real hot and cold. When he's hot, boy, it's hot. Um, and when it's cold, it's sometimes it, it, he he doesn't always rattle him in. I think maybe like a 39% free three point shooter is maybe overstating what I think he will be in the pros because I've, I've I've watched enough of him. But when it, like when he's hot, he's hot. As Duke, he hit five threes against him. Um, the the things that he does that are like it's not the shooting or, or like or or his physical profile. Is that he does everything pretty well. He's very physical and understands the physicality of 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 the game. He's an excellent rebounder. He's a pretty darn good passer, and he can run dribble handoffs and dribble a little bit. He's not really going to break anyone down off the dribble. He's not going to get to the rim, um, and he's certainly not going to finish above the rim when he gets there. He's he is going to do kind of what he is. He's a really good position rebounder. He's got really long arms. He's got really good hands. He can pass. He can shoot a little bit. Um, he just does a little bit of everything. And if the shooting sticks, he's an excellent NBA player. Excellent might be an overstatement. He's a, like a long-term role player in the league. If the shooting doesn't stick, it's a big question for him. But like, like I'm putting my cards on the table. Like I'm just a Carolina fan. And I love H and I don't, when, when like Nazir Little came into the league, Go back and listen to my Nazir Little scouting report uh, when he was when he was joining joining uh, the Blazers after eight months in Chapel Hill. It wasn't the same type of thing. Like um, I didn't feel this way about Kobe White. I didn't really feel this way about Cam Johnson. Although I I I, I did enjoy the Cam Cam Johnson experience. I I don't feel this way about Armando Baycott and R, and R J Davis. I straight up love H. Like he's like an all time favorite for me. Um, I I don't often share on this particular program my fandom very openly it is a uh, private and intense thing that I do on my own but I love H man I love him I love him um I hope he gets into the league and continues to be fun because he's as easy to root for as a player as I've ever come across um he spent a few months in Chapel Hill and I adore him uh that's enough. That's enough gushing about a guy who's going to go like what? Uh, ESPN has about forty three. The Ringer has him at forty seven. Sam Vecini didn't have him in his mock. Raphael didn't have him in his top thirty. Like 
He's going to go like 40th in the draft, right? Um, this is more about me than it is about him. But I think he is a do-everything type of forward. I think he's an undersized Swiss Army Knife 4. Um, kind of like... I don't want to, he's not quite Boris Diaw because he doesn't have the sort of, um, he doesn't have the sort of artistry of Diaw, but he's sort of halfway between Diaw and, and, and Draymond Green, right? Like he's, he's, he's in between those two spots because I think he's a competitive defender, um, but he is, uh, he's, he's like an undersized creative power forward. Uh, um, trust me, if, if he ends up on the Blazers, we'll talk about him a lot more. Okay, let's let's hit this let's hit the third segment. I want to share a quote from Sam Presti that I think is incredibly telling um along with a Reddit post that I think nailed it even before Presti said anything. Join me in that third segment, won't you? Still a pass first point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked On Blazers. Listen. I think I've been doing this long enough to know like hey hey Mike if you read something on Reddit, don't just share it whole cloth on the show. Like, that's not what podcasting is. It isn't like um, re- reading the fan forums and bringing it to life. Although I will say, like, I value the the contributors at, at, our, at our slash Rip City because it gives me a good sense of sort of the pulse of what people are thinking about. And also, like, the, the like, insano fringe of people, too. Um, and I think in some ways, um, the fringe is important is important for me to know about. Um, although I do, um, I'll scan those comments. I'm not reading them. But I, I saw a post from user Blinkomatic on 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 Reddit that was like, uh, the gist of it, and 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 I, uh, I'm not gonna, and I'm not gonna quote it verbatim, but like the gist of it was like, this is a really good draft to kind of assess the Blazers' front office, and I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think that I think that really nails my feelings on this. Um, what like you go into this with a a roster that is like you kind of can go in any direction you want. This offseason is a chance to go kind of any direction you want, or at least like um, aggressively in, in in a couple different directions. I should say not maybe not any direction you want. I don't think they could get like really good if they wanted to, but they could they could kind of they can choose their own adventure in in some serious ways. And they have four freaking draft picks: seven, fourteen, thirty four, and forty. Like four picks in the top forty. They have a, they have a chance to kind of really shape the next step of, you know, the next iteration of the, of this team this summer, right? Like this is a big summer for them. Um, and I think in general, the Blazer fan, general Blazer fan thinks that the Blazers or has the perception that the, the Blazers current front office is like really good at, at scouting and drafting. Um, and I don't know that I share that. Here's what I think. We don't know. <laughs> we, we don't know. How, how could we possibly know? Um, Jabari Walker, it seems like an interesting second round pick. Uh, Tumani Kamara was a really nice hit in the trade world. Um, what do we know about Shane Sharp? He's got some tools, but we don't know if he's going to be good or not. Like we don't, we just don't know. We have no, I, I, like you can be confident, but you don't know anything. You're, you're, you, but there, but there's reason to be confident. Scoot is like a total unknown and was bad as a rookie. Um, like Ryan Rupert is a total unknown. Chris Murray wasn't particularly good as a rookie, as a, as a first rounder. Like it, none of these guys are set in stone, but like, I, I don't think we know anything about like this, this particular front office is like, has is like incredible at scouting. I don't think we know anything, but as these guys continue to grow up, you get year three, Shane Sharp, year two, Scoot Henderson. You continue to learn more year two and uh, of, of Chris Murray and, and Ryan repair year three of Jabari Walker. You, you kind of get a better sense of where these guys are, right? Like you'll, you'll be able to, to have more firmer opinions on where the front office is. And I'm not telling you that they aren't good. I'm telling you that we don't know what they are. We don't know. Like I don't, I don't, I can't, how could I possibly have a firm opinion about them at this point? Um, in terms of like scouting and drafting and stuff, I think other things you can have a firm opinion on. Like Joe Cronin has been wheeling and dealing, um, but like in general, just like the draft, it, it's been we don't know yet. Every, the jury is still out on literally everyone. No one has solidified themselves as like a surefire great pick. Um, Tumani Kamara looks like a surefire interesting second round that you nailed right. Like you, you found a role player, um, but like beyond that. I guess Duop Reith was a good find, like that type of thing. But like, again, I remember the last decade of the Blazers. They were pretty good at finding second rounders too. And I don't think that Neil Olshay is, was particularly good at nailing the draft, but he was pretty good at finding bargains in the second round. So like, I, I, I'm just, I'm not there yet. 
So I think blink o is, is it was right in this. It's like, this is a good, this is a really good summer to sort of test, to see where they're at, to judge where they're at. Um, and then with that in mind, I read this quote from Sam Presti. Uh, Sam Presti, the GM, longtime GM of Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, he does these like two hour long end of season press conferences, kind of like state of the union shareholder meeting vibe type of things. Um, I used to resent them. Um, and I think that was a me problem more than a Sam Presti problem. And now I, I like really respect that Sam Presti does this. But he said this among a million other things in like a two, two and a half hour chat with the media in OKC. He said, I like the draft. I think it's pretty good. He's talking about the 2024 draft. I like the 2024 draft. I think it's pretty good. I think every one of these is so different. One thing we know historically is that there is good players in there and they never go in order. Someone is going to come out of the second round. It's going to have a huge impact. Someone is going to be picked in the 20s. There's a 3% chance or something. You can get a top starter or a really good player in the 20s, an all-NBA player in the 20s. That's really, really hard to do, but it happens. And that's how I feel about this. The Blazers are not perfectly set up. The, the, the ping pong balls did not go their way, right? They ended up with, with seventh pick, which was their second most likely slot based on the draft lottery odds. But like they didn't jump up in the draft. They didn't get any good luck. Um, second round picks are really hard to get right. 14 has not traditionally like churned out stars, right? Where stars come from is the top of the draft. But I think what Presti says here, one thing we know is that there is good players in there and that they never go in order. And that's it. That's why I think it's fair and right to say, here's how I feel. Like, and 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 I'm not going to make like in August. I'm not going to make these firm decisions, right? And I th I don't I think like even judging draft picks a year in is like probably not fair. I think like some people say, wait five years. You know what? You wait five years, half those dudes are out of the league, right? Like, <laughs> like who, even getting a second contract in the league is relatively unlikely, much less a third. Um, but like. I think because these things never go in order and you have a chance to get them right. And this particular draft is so wide open. There is no consensus beyond like, it looks like um, Zachary Sashay might go one or Alex Sar might go one. And then after that, it could be anyone from like three to 20. It could be anyone. I think there's a pretty strong, like from three to 15, there's like, there's basically like 12 guys that could go in the next nine picks, maybe 15 guys that could go in the next nine picks. And then there's probably another chunk after that, right? Like based on just like reading mock drafts and stuff. But like the challenge for the Blazers is that, you know, six teams are going to make decisions ahead of them and then more teams are going to make it ahead of them at 14. But it teams get it wrong. Drafting is incredibly hard. It's a total and complete crapshoot, but good teams get it right mostly. Even Sam Presti has some flubs. Like even Sam Presti has some flubs. Like, um, I, I think the further we get down the line, it's gonna be like, hmm, that Josh Giddy pick didn't look very good, right? Like, sure. But you nail the, the Jalen Williams pick, you nail the the, the Chet Holmgren pick, it's like consensus two, and probably wouldn't have been two if it wasn't um different draft class or whatever. But like, um it's it is I think this is the this, this summer this off season is a chance for the blazers to th this front office to really put their stamp on things um we'll know more about what their first handful of picks look like after this season and then we'll see like how many can they find impact players can they find guys who are good as rookies and not just you know not me not good but like clearly going to be good right as opposed to like yeah that's a project and i think um i think this is a i think this is an excellent off season to kind of test what they have Test what they have. What do you got? Um, I think this is a great, you know, like, what does it mean for me to pass judgment in the basement, right? It's like, it's not meaningful. But I, I do think, like, when you're a fan of this team, your perceptions can change. And this is a great summer to say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna withhold my judgment. I'm going to see what they do in the draft. I'm going to see what they do in, in the offseason. But particularly with the scouting stuff, like, particularly with, I think that's, if their path out of here, their path from being a bad team to a good team is to getting some draft picks right, um, Let's see if them, like, how do they go into a draft that looks, like, pretty hard to scout? If you're really good at this, and the perception is that they're really good at this, if you're really good at this, nail this draft. They never go in order. Presti said it himself. They never go in order. So, at 7, the best player might be on the board. At 14, you might have already missed him. The best player might be on the board. The, the, the one I always point to is in 2012, the uh, Golden State Warriors tanked, like, all hell. They, they started tanking. They played Dominique McGuire at point guard at the end of the season, just like tanking, like just a egregious, egregious losing at the end of the year. 
all of that to secure. Uh, they had a top eight protected pick. They had to keep, they had to hold on to it as, as strongly as they could. They draft Harrison Barnes in, in the top eight. Harrison Barnes, two. <laughs> didn't love him. <laughs> didn't, Carolina guy di- didn't love him like I love Harrison Ingram. Um, uh, they draft Harrison Ingram. Or they draft Harrison Barnes in the lottery. They draft Festus Azili at the end of the first round. Early second round, they take Her- they take Draymond Green. They didn't even get it right. Like they didn't even know. But you, f- th- like, th- this is what I mean by it. Like you, the front office might even get it wrong, quote unquote. Like drafting a worse player ahead of the next one. But like the because the draft is such a crapshoot, and because the Blazers have four cracks at it. You got to get it right. You got to get it right. You got the Blazers need to come away with this draft from one with one NBA starter. P- full stop. More than that would be great, but they need to draft an M- someone who starts in the NBA for an extended period of time because that's the task. That's the task. That's that's like if they're going to get out of this, that's what they got to do. This is a wonderful, a wonderful sort of portal over the next month. We're about four weeks away from the draft um, as they prep for it and they make their selections and we see what they turn into to kind of figure out to make maybe make some more firm decisions about what you feel um, this this front office strengths is. Because right now, to me, I have no idea, but I'm willing to withhold um, some judgment and say like, hey. They got it all right. Look how good they are. Or like, hmm, they haven't been as good as I thought they might have been. I think this is a great, a wonderful offseason, a wonderful situation, a wonderful weird draft class to see if you're good at scouting. Let's see it. Let's see it. All right. That's it for this week. Um, I didn't have any guests this week. Life's busy. It just, it's, it's, I struggle to book some. Next week, I'll try to get folks on here for some chat, for some draft chat and things like that. That's what we do. Five days a week, wherever you get podcasts. Come back next week. Um, We'll do it again. Tell your friends about the show. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.